Yep, Betty has a very special toilet. It's a cassette toilet, and one of the reasons why I purchased her, and I'm excited to tell you all about it today. As you can see from this little clip, the seat itself swivels to allow room for when you're showering, which is pretty fab. All right, one of the main things that you have to remember is if you want to control odor in any RV toilet, you need to use a digester. Um, I'll show you a bunch of those in another video. Um, however, put the digester in, flush it with water, you'll be good to go. The water flush is on the wall behind the toilet in Betty. You just push the button and this sliding lever opens and closes the trap door, allowing the contents to go into the cassette. If you press the um, water fill and that red light comes on, it means that your cassette is full. Um, also, obviously, your water uh, pump needs to be on for the water to go into the toilet. So let's go ahead and empty it out. The one thing you need to keep in mind is the toilet has to be facing forward when you go outside. So outside, the chamber is locked. You open it up with the key. The handle is also the lock that holds the cassette into the cassette chamber. Pretty handy. The handle that pulls out, wheels that roll nicely, and you can dump it either in a dump site or a toilet, anywhere that you can legally put uh, black water contents. So it has a great handle on the front. There's a little ridge on the back for your other hand. That button is very important, and I'll explain it to you later. It has to do with uh, forcing air into the chamber to allow the contents to come out. Um, I recommend putting water in after you've rinsed, after you've dumped it. Put the cap back on. Slowly kind of jiggle it around to get that water squished. Um, you, you don't want to do it too hard. There's a floater inside and then you rinse it out and it keeps it nice and clean. Um, also, just in case you're wondering, there's only water inside this. I have sanitized this unit thoroughly before doing this demo. So you're done and you just go ahead and put the cap back on and you would put it back in the cassette and roll it back with your wheels. It's really easy. Um, I am going to take this opportunity, however, to uh, show you a few things on the cassette itself. So let's take a close look at the actual cassette. The spout comes out, the cap. Um, make sure that you get the cap when you pick up the vehicle. I did not have one and it took me a while to get one. So when you go to empty it, there is that little um, ridge on the back side to grip onto and there's that handle on the front. Tip it down. When you've got it in place, push that button. So the thing to know with the button is it basically allows some air to go in, which forces the contents out. But you don't want to push that button until, the con until this whole thing is tipped over. Basically, when you push the button, you're releasing whatever's inside is going to come oozing out. So just be aware. <laughs> it caught me by surprise the first time I used it. So there is a trick to maintaining these. Um, just so you can see the mechanism and how it works when you're actually utilizing it, when you are turning the toilet on and off inside, this is what's happening. This trap door is opening and allowing the contents from your toilet bowl to enter the cassette. One thing you have to do is lubricate the seal. There's special lubricant you can buy. Some people use olive oil. Um, there's also a little trick if you need to get in there to clean it or change the float or uh, replace the seal. You take the little lid and you turn it 180 degrees and now it becomes a little handle. So on the unit you'll see two little circle, an open circle and a closed circle. On this circular piece there's a little arrow. What you're going to do, it's kind of stiff, is you're going to take the lid which is now a lever, and you're going to rotate that around until that arrow meets, matches up with the open circle, hence you're opening the unit, um, until it pops. When it pops, you can literally take the whole thing out, and you can see all of the 
mechanisms. If you need to replace any of those elements, very easy to get into. The other thing you'll notice is here's the float that I note referenced earlier for the little light. And if you need to really clean it up, you can get in there and do that. Keep it super sanitized. It's easy. So let's go ahead and put this back. You just do the reverse of what I did using the little lever. It pops down, rotate it back in until it clicks. And then what you are going to want to do is turn your little um, catch or trap door back. Just remember you want the slidey bit to be facing back. That's what kind of slides into the chamber. And then the, other, the last thing I want to show you is I'm going to turn it over and show you this little piece at the bottom, which you just have to double check that it is fitting properly, the, the cross part is fitting properly in the channels. When I first got the unit, I had lots of weird liquid that was spilling out into the cavity chamber that holds the cassette. And I determined that this thing was not actually set in there properly. So just check on that and you'll be good to go. Okay, I know there's been lots of conversations about, ew, the cassette toilet. What a stinky thing to deal with. Well, if you've ever changed a diaper, or had a fur kid that's sick, then you've handled far worse than the cassette toilet. Um, it's actually one of the reasons that I chose Betty. At the time that I purchased her, the Heimer Active was the only production RV available in the North American market that had a cassette toilet, and that was a big plus for me. I essentially uh, use her on the weekends, and the cassette is the perfect solution for me in that situation. I get to go out for a couple of days, come home, and dump the cassette in my toilet. I don't have to worry about going to dump sites. My gray tank, I use environmentally friendly products. They make gray water certified products now, and I actually dump my gray tank on my garden when I get home. If I'm out for extended periods of time, then I do use a dump site for the gray tank. Um, I do not have to winterize living in Florida, but it's my understanding that when the vehicle is winterized, you can still use the cassette very easily. You're not running the water through the water system in the RV. You can just put water in the tank, but because it's a cassette, it's basically um, really easy to utilize and keep clean and empty as you normally would. And that for me was also a positive. I know with traditional black tanks in RVs, if you're having an odor issue or you're having any clogging issues, there are pipes and hoses and all sorts of crevices that you cannot get to to deal with whatever that issue is. The beautiful thing about a cassette is if there's a massive problem, you can pull a cassette out, you can replace it. But the minute it's removed from the vehicle, the problem is also removed. And um, the last thing that I'd like to point out is a gallon of water weighs approximately eight pounds. And this is a five gallon cassette, give or take. So a full one weighs about 40 pounds. I find that perfectly manageable to get it in and out and wheel it around. Um, I really, really like the cassette toilet.